Okay, so in this mini tutorial we're going to look at the vertebro basilar system, which is the main distribution network for the posterior circulation of the brain. And what we've got on the left hand side is a beautiful injected image of the vessels supplying the brainstem and the cerebellum. And on the right hand side we've got diagrammatic lateral view through the brainstem and the cerebellum on the back. So the first thing we're going to do is just define the levels that we're dealing with here. Um, so we're going to draw some dotted lines, and these dotted lines apply, of course, to both images. And these dotted lines are demarcating the three different parts of the brainstem. Okay? So here we've got the uh, midbrain. Here we've got the pons, and here we've got the medulla. Okay, and we can see the various branches of the um, vertebral arteries and the basilar artery, and we're going to have a look at how they relate um, to the lateral view. Uh, let's just remind you very quickly what those different branches are. Here we've got the vertebral arteries ascending. We've got the anterior spinal artery there that comes off the vertebrals. We've got the posterior inferior cerebellar arteries here coming off the vertebrals. Um, we've got the anterior inferior cerebellar arteries there coming off the basilar. We've got these multitudinous pontine branches coming off the basilar supplying the pons. We've got the superior cerebellar artery here. The basilar bifurcating into the posterior cerebellar arteries here. So what we're going to do now is, is we're going to draw these onto the lateral view, um, illustrate how they supply the cerebellum, but more importantly, we're going to show you how they supply the brainstem en passant, as it were. So these vessels supply the cerebellum, but they also supply the brainstem in their proximal territories. So let's draw on these vessels on the lateral view, and we're going to use a relatively thick pen uh, in red. So here is the uh, left vertebral, there, and there's the right vertebral, which I'm not going to draw in its entirety. Here is the basilar artery running over the surface of the pons, there. Um, and as you know, the basilar artery at, at the top of its um, course bifurcates into the um, posterior cerebral artery here. But it also gives off, just proximal to that, the superior cerebellar artery there. So now you can see why we say that the posterior cerebral artery and the superior cerebellar artery both supply the midbrain. Okay, Because on their way to their ultimate destinations they send off branches which supply the midbrain itself. So we'll show those little branches supplying the midbrain. Okay, so the posterior cerebral and the superior cerebellar arteries both supply the midbrain as they get to their ultimate targets. Now let's look at these pontine branches. So we've got lots and lots of these little pontine branches coming off supplying the pons. And these are really crucial arteries because what you've got to remember is that passing just down through here in green is the corticospinal tract. And if those pontine arteries get blocked, say by a basilar artery stroke, we can actually destroy the entirety of the corticospinal tract. And this, this can lead to the very tragic condition known as locked-in syndrome, uh, where you're not able to move any of your limbs at all um, you're only able to move your eyes, and that's because the blood supply to the midbrain is preserved when only these vessels have been blocked. So if you lose the corticospinal tract through basilar artery infarct or pontine artery infar infarct, you're in a very bad way because you've got locked-in syndrome. Now let's add the anterior inferior cerebellar artery. So here, oops, wrong colour, sorry the anterior inferior cerebellar artery here. Uh, and the anterior inferior cerebellar artery supplies the anterior inferior surface of the cerebellum, but also on its way 
it throws off little branches to the caudal pons. Okay, so the pons receives a branch, branches from the anterior inferior cerebellar artery. Um, now we can add on the posterior inferior cerebellar, cerebellar artery, the pica, which supplies the posterior inferior aspect of the cerebellum, but also throws off these little branches to the lateral aspect of the medulla. So the lateral aspect of the medulla is supplied by branches of the posterior inferior cerebellar artery. Uh, and so in certain cases you might have um, a cerebellar stroke in the pica distribution, but you might also have a lateral brainstem stroke at the same time if the blockage sits quite proximally in the pica artery. Furthermore, the anterior brain uh, medulla is also supplied by little branches coming off the vertebral arteries themselves. Okay, So really, you know, it's actually not that difficult because all you've got to do is look at this diagram and realise that if an artery runs over a particular part of the brain, if it courses over a particular part of the brain, then it supplies it with blood. That's the basic rule that you should follow, and it really is no more complicated than that. Okay?